And we now turn to questions to the Minister for Regional Development. Question number nine has been withdrawn, and I call Colum Eastwood. Speaker, there are currently uh, proposals to dual two sections of the A6, uh, these being Randallstown to Castle Dawson and Londonderry to Dungiven. <coughs> Funding has been provided to advance the A6 Randallstown to Castle Dawson dual carriageway project to be uh, uh, ready, uh, shovel ready in 2015 and uh, when funding becomes available in the future to allow construction to commence at short notice. The Essex Londonderry to Dungiven duelling scheme, which includes a bypass of Dungan at Dungiven, is well advanced in terms of development. Uh, it has been through public inquiry and the inspector has produced a report embracing various recommendations. I am currently uh, considering a response to those recommendations and will issue the departmental statement in due course when I am satisfied that all issues, a number of which are complex, have been appropriately reviewed. I call the Minister for Supplementary. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for his answer. G given the fact that uh, your predecessor refused to consider decoupling the, the, the bypass at Dungiven from the larger project, have you any views on that? Uh, because I think we have uh, people in Dungiven who are living in the most polluted town uh, in Ireland, uh, and they'd be desperately seeking uh, that bypass to go ahead as soon as possible. Thank you, Member, for his uh, supplementary, and indeed happy to confirm that uh, I, I have taken a, a, a decision that uh, the, the, the various components of the entire scheme can be decoupled um, and subject to the available. Uh, finance being made available and the other issues being resolved, then, then we can proceed. Uh, I um, note the, the comment made on the air quality issue relating uh, to Dungiven. I recently met officials from the Mavadi Borough Council on uh, uh, the issue, uh, and certainly um, uh, they uh, see the solution uh, to the air quality issue uh, in terms of the um, achieving the, uh, the, the bypass of, uh, at Dungiven uh, in the earliest possible uh, time period. Uh, I understand that, and of course, I have been carrying forward uh, this scheme um, as quickly as possible. I call Gregory Campbell. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, I welcome the Minister's assurance on that issue. Uh, setting aside the funding, which I know he'll probably allude to, uh, and the support that he needs, which he will get uh, uh, in support of getting the money to proceed with the scheme, but can he give an assurance that every step and measure that needs to be taken in advance of proceeding with the A6 scheme will be put in place as urgently as possible? Because he knows some businesses have already closed in anticipation of a road scheme that they are now wondering when will it ever be completed? I'm grateful to the, the member for um, his uh, supplementary question and indeed the indication of, of uh, clear support for the financial position that I, I find myself in, and I hope that that carries through on all uh, issues relating to my department. It's certainly great as Azili the convert, and thank you very much indeed for that. Um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, on the issue of bringing forward um, elements of uh, the, the uh, uh, the overall project, um, uh, as you know, it's, uh, um, there's the Randallstown Castle Dawson. I've indicated that we um, have uh, put some money um, into uh, that to make it shovel ready in 2015. Um, the issues around the Dungiven Bypass, uh, I, I would hope to make progress in terms of uh, the departmental or the, the, the statement. Um, uh, um, uh, arising out of the public inquiry uh, as quickly as possible. Um, uh, and again, then it will be down to um, finance and the availability of that and working through the statutory processes uh, that have to be undertaken. Moving on, I call Cahill Boylan. Kester Rado, Led Hall, question number two, please. Mr Deputy Speaker, a public information event for the proposed A28 Armagh Eastlink was held on the 11th of June 2014 in, in the Armagh City Hotel. At the event, the concerns of the local community uh, in relation to the impact of the Eastlink uh, were again highlighted. Therefore, uh, I uh, consider it uh, appropriate at this time to carry out a review of the preferred option to ensure that local concerns are considered fully. 
uh, and uh, that the uh, um, proposed Armagh Eastlink uh, will offer the best possible solution for uh, Armagh City. Um, I draw the members' attention to the press release detailing this approach last week. The next significant step uh, in the scheme development process will be to undertake the detailed design for the proposal. However, I am very mindful uh, of the concerns of the local community uh, and of the need to ensure that the, the proposed Arma East Link will offer the best solution. Um, this review will include consideration of the preferred corridor emerging further out uh, the Market Hill Road at the Eden of Ayes, uh, Industrial Estate area. Uh, with regard to the North, uh, Armagh North and West Link Road, uh, consideration of, of options for a preferred line and junction st uh, strategy based on the out-of-town corridor is continuing. Uh, this has in, uh, included uh, discussions with Deloitte, uh, who have been appointed by Armagh City and District Council to develop a master plan for the Mullineur area. Um, it would not be appropriate to make a decision on the preferred route pending development of uh, the master plan. I call Cahill Boylan. Or I last can call you August Gone Breakfast Lesson Air as Dr. Agra. Um, I thank you and thank the Minister for his answer. But, but could I ask the Minister, um, and I certainly welcome the review because there was complaints from people and residents on Newry Road in relation to the East Link, but could I ask the Minister to give us a definitive timeline because the Minister is well aware of the traffic problems there is around Armagh City and could he give us a timeline in relation to the East Link? And also, could the he member give has us a asked this question. Minister. Well, I um, thank the member for his uh, supplementary question, uh, and indeed, uh, I do believe that uh, both the, the, the Armagh East Link and the um, North and West Link um, proposals will provide benefits in terms of improved journey times and journey time reliability and safety on the strategic road network. Um, obviously, uh, it is very um, important that, that we continue to work through the various stages of the schemes. Um, and not least the issue of um, uh, available finance. It's not possible at this point to earmark uh, 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 specific dates uh, as to when uh, the, the East Link scheme would take uh, place, but I would certainly be hopeful that, that in, in, the, in the new budgetary period that monies could be found uh, and made available for it then. Uh, uh, and I, I take the point that uh, the traffic uh, issues of uh, traffic congestion uh, in Armagh do need to be dealt with uh, and need to be brought forward as quickly um, uh, as, uh, uh, as possible. And as Minister, that, that's my uh, objective. I call William Irwin. Can I first of all welcome the fact that there's going to be a review uh, of the East Link Road? The Minister will be aware of the level of concern that there is on this proposed link road going through a largely residential area of Amma City. Can the Minister confirm whether or not he supports the current DRD preferred route? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grateful today to the member for his uh, uh, supplementary um, question, and of course uh, he, he, he makes a very good point as, as to the importance of the Arma East Link and the historic uh, need uh, uh, for it, and it's been talked about in Arma for uh, a generation now. But I say that um, if I were completely satisfied uh, with the current proposal, then I wouldn't be initiating uh, the, uh, the review that I have in terms of looking again and making sure that not only um, do, we get it, uh, do we get it right, but it's important that we, um, that we bring, uh, take on board the concerns uh, which, um, uh, which may be out there. And of course, I, I, I do regard myself as a listening minister, uh, I've been listening to the representations that I've received from people uh, in, in, in that immediate area, uh, and we will review the current situation and satisfy ourselves that the route that will be ultimately chosen will be uh, the, 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 the best sensible solution for easing uh, some of the congestion uh, in that part of our city. I call Dominic Bradley. Um, could I ask the Minister, can he, say, he alluded to finance and to a new budgetary period, can he indicate what priority uh, this particular project has in terms of capital spending? 
I'm grateful to the, to, to the member, and, uh, uh, and I think that uh, I, I certainly do regard it. Uh, both these schemes, both the East uh, Link scheme and the North and West schemes, as important uh, for the City of Armagh. Uh, I have something of, a, 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 of an interest, given that um, I, I happen to represent uh, the constituency as well. But I, I think it's understood that uh, Armagh has uh, issues of uh, congestion that can be dealt with through uh, the outworking of uh, schemes, and it is my intention to pursue those um, uh, with as much uh, intensity as, uh, as we possibly can, to make progress on them and to see them brought to uh, successful fruition. Moving on, I call Jonathan Craig. Question number three, Mr Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, as you will be aware, uh, following the recent announcement on June monitoring, uh, my department's resource budget that is used for the day-to-day -day maintenance of the road network uh, has been cut. Uh, this cut applies equally across the whole of Northern Ireland, including uh, the Lisburn area. Uh, as a result, I had no option uh, other than to take some very tough decisions and stop issuing new work instructions to external contractors who currently undertake uh, around one quarter of our routine maintenance work and three quarters of the work required to repair uh, street lighting faults. Uh, my department's uh, operations and maintenance staff will endeavour to keep the road network in as safe a condition as possible. However, as they only have uh, resources to complete around three quarters of the total workload, they will not be able to provide the service the public would uh, expect in normal circumstances. My department's uh, operations and maintenance staff have limited street lighting resources. They will endeavour uh, to deal with group faults and single outages uh, on a priority basis. Uh, regrettably, this has the potential to result in many street lights uh, being out across Northern Ireland over the winter period. Uh, these have been very difficult decisions to take, but they are necessary in order to try and protect areas uh, such as winter service. Uh, where withdrawal of our work would uh, have an even greater impact on the Northern Ireland economy and the public. Um, and I do realise that these measures will impact on contractors, on road users and the public, but I have been forced to set priorities so that we operate within reduced budgets. I call Jonathan Craig. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And that sounded like a statement from the Minister that said the lights are going out all over Northern Ireland. Um, that said, Minister, um, there are co ongoing contracts which impact on the road infrastructure in Northern Ireland, carried out mainly by other parts of departments. I am um, thinking of the Blairis Road, which has recently been dug up by other companies. Are you going to tighten up on how they actually resurface those roads? Because recently that has been picked up by your department resurfacing roads which have been destroyed by others. grateful to the uh, member for his uh, uh, supplementary question and I, and I um, do not uh, take any pleasure in, in uh, saying that, that the lights may be going out or some of the lights may be going out uh, across Northern Ireland. It is indeed, I, I, I view it as a very serious uh, departure. Uh, I regret it very much, uh, and I very much hope that uh, I, I will continue to press for monies in the October monitoring and the later monitoring rounds uh, to ensure that the resource budget is properly funded, uh, and I want to do that. In, in, in relation to his point uh, about uh, other agencies, the member will know that we have a memorandum of understanding with uh, such agencies, uh, and uh, we, we seek to coordinate their work uh, in a proper uh, and responsible way, and it is equally important that um, that work that is carried out, either by them or on their behalf by contractors, uh, is done to a satisfactory and proper uh, nature. And that is something that I am uh, continually interested in, uh, and uh, continue to pursue to ensure that that standards all over uh, are consistent and are at an appropriate level. I call Robin Swan. Speaker, the Minister has indicated that the recent budget cuts have left him with only 75 per cent capacity and grass cutting, patching and gully and emptying. Can the Minister tell me how many gullies across Northern Ireland is his department responsible for and will he ensure that the flooding hotspots will continue to get priority attention? 
Well, I'm grateful to the, to, to the member uh, for his supplementary question. And indeed, um, uh, it is an important uh, subject, and, and I can confirm that um, the, my department is responsible for the cleaning and maintenance of over half a million gullies across Northern Ireland. And uh, of course, uh, of these, we aim to inspect and clean, uh, where necessary, all gullies in, ur in urban areas twice each year and gullies uh, in, in rural areas uh, once uh, each year. Uh, as a result of the recent uh, budget cuts, uh, I no longer have uh, sufficient funding to pay contractors for gully emptying. Uh, that is going to be a challenge. Uh, and uh, my department's operations and, and maintenance staff will endeavour to prioritise gully cleaning and dealing with the areas with known flooding areas uh, uh, problems, and including uh, some of the uh, uh, very prominent cases that we've heard um, uh, over recent times. And certainly, yes, we would seek to prioritise those areas to ensure that they are protected uh, and as far as we can. I call Joe Byrne. Speaker, I thank the Minister for his answers thus far. Given that uh, the Minister has talked about the road maintenance cuts given the budgetary position, can the Minister give an assurance that those two counties of Tyrone and Fermanagh that have no railways will not be more adversely affected by the cutbacks in the current road maintenance budget? Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary uh, for his question. Um, and, uh, I'm not sure about quite about the reference for, uh, for railways uh, in terms of the uh, emptying of gullies, uh, etc. But uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, he makes uh, a point. Uh, the member will know that, uh, to be fair and equitable about it, uh, I, I will have to share um, the challenge uh, of these decisions um, equally and fairly throughout, uh, throughout Northern Ireland. Um, and uh, as I've said earlier, it, it gives me no pleasure to, to stand at this dispatch box and say that, that, uh, that these pressures are here, uh, but that has been forced upon me. Uh, I have, my uh, department has affected savings over the last three years to the tune of 106 million. I haven't uh, shirked away from my responsibility in that, and yet uh, further pressure is being applied, and there are consequences for decisions made at executive level and indeed supported by the members' own party at executive level uh, that, uh, that, that will put pressure uh, on the work of my department, even in the counties uh, that, uh, that he refers to. Moving on, I call Bronwyn McGann. Gormio, I've got a question for. TransLink, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, is currently uh, undertaking uh, finalising a feasibility study to examine uh, the options for a replacement ticketing system. Uh, among the options being considered are uh, enhancement of the current system, uh, use of uh, ITSO um, ticketing, which is an open standards system supported by the Department for Transport in G GB, and the use of uh, contactless uh, bank debit or credit cards, similar to that which has been pilot, piloted and is about to go live uh, in London. Uh, when that study is finalised, TransLink will then uh, complete um, an economic appraisal, which will examine the costs and benefits of the various options. Uh, this will be subject to approval by my department and the Department of Finance and Personnel. The department will want to ensure that any new ticketing system offers the best possible value uh, for money to passengers. I, McGann. I thank the Minister for his response. Minister, have you given any consideration to coordinate integrated ticketing with other transport providers on an All Ireland basis? Well, I'm grateful to the member for the um, supplementary question. Uh, and I think she's referring to the, the LEAP card system, uh, which is used uh, in the Republic of Ireland. Um, and I have to say that that system was developed uh, specifically uh, for the Republic of Ireland. Um, its use was considered, but um, um, it, it has been concluded that it could not easily uh, be converted to the open standards required for wider use. Um, uh, other technological uh, developments, such as mobile phones and uh, contactless uh, bank cards are considered to offer a more up-to-date uh, technical solution. 
It is, of course, recognised that Translink works closely uh, with Irish Rail and Bus Éireann on cross-border services, and that it, uh, it's expected that any new system uh, will be sufficiently flexible to, to handle the tickets involved in this. I call John Dallet. I thank the Minister for his answer. The Minister will be well aware that there is a pilot scheme probably completed now involving integrated transport in the Dungannon area. And I ask the question, will any uh, new system take account of the possibility that public transport in Northern Ireland may well be shared uh, with the uh, community sector and indeed with the private sector? Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question. It, it, it is not uh, directly linked, I have to say, to ticketing uh, procedures uh, involved uh, north, south, east or west. Nevertheless, um, I, I, I um, understand the, the question that he raises in terms of the pilot scheme that have been undertaken in the Dungannon area uh, on uh, transportation issues. Uh, we are still uh, working through though, uh, and reviewing uh, the processes that are working with the different agencies, both in health and education. Uh, and I'm sure that useful work uh, and useful outcomes will be provided there. I'm not in a stage to indicate um, that uh, we're ready to uh, make uh, wider announcements uh, and uh, extend uh, proposals uh, for, uh, for, for Northern Ireland or anywhere else uh, at this point. I call Tom Elliott. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for that. He did mention, uh, in answer to the, to the first question, uh, that he had to bring forward an economic appraisal or business plan. Just wondering if the Minister has any idea at this stage of the costings that may be associated with the proposal, and if he's had any discussions so far with the Minister of Finance and Personnel. Uh, grateful to the, to the member for his supplementary. Uh, no, the, the, the work uh, is not yet completed, uh, um, and at that point, uh, upon its completion, then we will put forward the business case, and obviously that will have to be looked at both within the department and with uh, the uh, DFP, uh, and uh, we will uh, look and seek to make progress at the earliest point uh, in relation to uh, these matters. Moving on, I call Sean Lynch. Case ever Coog, question five. Mr. Deputy Speaker, as I advised in my uh, response to question three, um, after the uh, re recent announcement on June monitoring, uh, my department's resource budget uh, that is used for the day-to-day -day maintenance of the road network has been cut. Um, in order to protect uh, areas such as winter maintenance, which costs an average, uh, average approximately £7 million per year and is vital to the economy of Northern Ireland, uh, and traffic light uh, maintenance, which costs an average approximately £4 million per year, uh, and contractual uh, commitments for energy, I, I, I had no option uh, other than to take some tough decisions and stop issuing new work uh, instructions to external contractors uh, who currently undertake, as I have said, around a quarter of our routine maintenance work and three quarters of the work um, associated with the repair of street lighting faults. Now, uh, again, I restate my department's operation and maintenance staff will endeavour to keep the road network in as safe a condition uh, as possible, uh, but they only have resources to complete around three quarters of the total workload and not be able to provide the service the public therefore would expect in normal circumstances. They are difficult decisions, uh, but they are necessary to try and protect areas such as winter service, where withdrawal of our work would have potentially an even greater impact uh, on the Northern Ireland economy and public. Uh, and I do realise that these measures will impact on contractors and road users and the public. But I have, as I said, been forced to set priorities so that we can operate within the reduced budget. The Minister has went to some extent to outline some of the amounts involved, but can the Minister provide a timeline for when these cuts would be implemented? Let me be clear, these, these uh, uh, cutbacks are, are immediate. Um, can I say to the, to the member, uh, since uh, the early part of August, to now and uh, to, to last Friday, um, in terms of street lights been out, there were something like 4,938 lights. Street lights have been reported out 
of which 1,134 uh, 1, have been fixed. So we are already in the situation where uh, the services, the frontline services that we would normally be expected to provide uh, are already suffering as a result of June monitoring and uh, the financial position. Uh, now, of course, where faults uh, present electrical uh, or other hazards, uh, th those faults will be dealt with urgently. And this important area of work is not affected by budgetary constraints. I should also say that uh, we will then prioritise uh, faults on groups of, of, uh, of street lights, and we will deal with single outages um, with, with as many of those uh, as we can. But this is now a real situation. And likewise, in the emptying of gullies and cutting back of, of uh, 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 grass, um, uh, I find myself in a very difficult and almost invidious position and I hope that the member as the Deputy Chair of the Committee for Regional Development will support my efforts to um, have my budget uh, restored uh, to its full capacity uh, as we move forward into uh, October and other monitoring uh, rounds. I call Jimmy Spratt. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, the minister, minister, in relation to some of the uh, issues in the press over the summer period in relation to the cutbacks, some mention was made of the winter uh, program in relation to road gridding, etc. Could you give this House an assurance today that the winter, winter gridding program will remain intact given the high number of fatal accidents that there has been in this province already this year? I'm grateful to the, to, to, to the member for his, uh, for his question, and, I, uh, and I'm slightly surprised at the tone of it because uh, I, I would have thought he and I, uh, that he as chair of the Committee for Regional Development would be on the same side uh, of the argument on this that, uh, and expressing concern at any impact uh, that my resource budget would face. Uh, and I hope that is the case because I don't want to see um, uh, impact on winter services and winter maintenance, because I do understand uh, how important a service that is uh, to provide. It costs, uh, as I have indicated earlier, approximately £7 million. But really, uh, I, I do look to uh, uh, other political parties uh, at the very top uh, of the executive who seem to be expressing concern in this House. <coughs> Both he and Mr Lynch have, have, have expressed concern in this House about the impact of cuts when really their parties have brought forward the proposals that put me in the position that I find myself in. I call Alistair MacDonald. Mr Deputy Speaker, could, could, could I ask the Minister if he has been able to give any assurances about the future to the external contractors? Uh, who employ thousands of people involved in road maintenance? In other words, have you just drawn a blank with them? Have, have, they been, have you been able to give them any promises of what it might look like in the future? Could I say that I, I uh, meet and speak with uh, uh, the representatives of the, of the contracting, uh, the road building contractors' uh, organisations on a regular basis? Uh, I have an open door policy uh, and I have uh, accepted. Um, uh, requests to meet uh, with um, uh, a number of, of, of their key individuals. Uh, and I have tried to be open and honest with them on the situation that I find myself in. And I have welcomed the support, not least the support in lobbying, that they have provided uh, to other political parties and other members of the executive uh, and around the executive table as to the position that they find themselves in as a consequence. Um, of these financial measures. This is not done by choice. This is not done at a whim. Uh, this is certainly not done with malice aforethought, but it is the real situation that I find myself in. I must balance my books, and therefore I have to take these tough decisions, understanding the consequence that it will have on the services that I provide and the impact that external contractors will face and possible layoff. Uh, of jobs and staff and, uh, and everything that goes with that. That is the end of the list of questions and we now move on to topical questions and I call Thomas Buchanan. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, can you provide us with an update on the current position of the proposed A5 Western Transport Corridor? 
The, uh, can I thank the minister? Or thank the member for his uh, question uh, on, on the on the A5. Um, the member will know that a public consultation on, on three of the four reports to inform um, appropriate assessments of the potential impacts on the various designated sites arising out of the FI project scheme uh, concluded on the 13th of June. Uh, consultation on the fourth report uh, is expected to begin during October 2014. Letters informing uh, landowners of the way forward with the scheme were issued uh, on the 30th of April and land owner meter Land owner meetings are ongoing. I call Tom Buchanan. I uh, thank the Minister for his response. And can you tell us where the scheme now sits in your list of priorities and what impact the uh, Sinn Féin SDLP refusal to sign up to welfare reform may have on this and other uh, large projects such as this? I am grateful to the, uh, uh, to the member's uh, supplementary uh, question. Uh, it's, clearly, there are uh, ongoing issues that we have to deal with in terms of uh, environmental statements and, and, and dealing with the, the, the appropriate assessments, and I have outlined those uh, in, in, some, uh, in, in some detail. Uh, in a letter to uh, ministerial colleagues uh, in February, I provided uh, an outline programme uh, whereby the environmental statement and the draft orders uh, would be published for consultation in November 2014, with the public possibility uh, of, a, of a public inquiry in spring summer 2015. Going forward, of course, um, and this is the uncertainty that the member in part refers to, uh, the overall financial position as to whether or not there will be sufficient capital money, uh, I'm not in a position to, uh, to, to confirm that situation. Um, and, uh, uh, but therefore, um, I'm doing, uh, I'm processing the work that is necessary uh, to be done at this point in time. But clearly, there's a financial uh, scenario here that, uh, that that could well impact on this scheme and indeed other capital schemes. I call Oliver McMullen. Will, will the minister tell me today? Will his department now accept all legal? All, all legal uh, claims that are proven to be direct results of his cutbacks to any damage to personal or damage to motor vehicles due to his cutbacks. Uh, <laughs> thank the member for his, uh, his question. And, 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 uh, the member, I think, should be aware of the, of the process that is involved where, where, where someone makes a claim and that claim is investigated, etc. Now, um, seems to me slightly rich um, that a question of this nature comes from uh, a member of a party that uh, has supported uh, uh, and whose actions have forced um, me to take decisions uh, um, that I, the decisions that I find myself um, having to take in terms of cutbacks in my resource budget. Nevertheless, uh, I'll try and overlook that. Uh, and say that, of course, we, we will continue to um, investigate uh, claims that are made against and respond accordingly. I call it Oliver McMullen. Um, I thank the Minister for that enlightened response. But can the Minister tell me now, has divisional managers, have they been instructed to draw up a list of how much savings they can make uh, due to the cutbacks in each, in each divisional area, and can he tell us how much he is actually saving to date? I think the member starts at a, a, at a bit, I think, a, 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 with the wrong premise here. Um, these are forced cutbacks on my department. These are not decisions that I go to senior officials and say, would it be possible to trim back and save some money? on either resource or maintenance issues. These are actually forced. These are real decisions that are impacting on street lights. As I've said, nearly 5,000 street lights out in a month. Um, we're only, we only have the ability to, to repair at this stage 1,100 uh, of those. Now, we will, uh, those repairs will be affected as quickly as possible. We are not abandoning those lights. We are simply saying it will take longer to fix them. But the suggestion that somehow this is a cunning plan to save money on behalf of my department, this is not. This is the voodoo economics of the member and his party. 
and the consequence of that. Yeah. 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 Call up Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister if he can give us an update on the transfer of off-street parking to local councils? Grateful to the member for uh, the uh, question, and uh, indeed, my officials have been engaged with uh, their counterparts in local government to uh, uh, to ensure the, the smooth transition um, of uh, of the transfer uh, of. Um, uh, th that, uh, th those facilities. Um, I'm not aware of um, issues, uh, serious uh, issues arising out of that. And I hope very much that uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, agree the necessary changes in time for um, the uh, take-up of the new councils in uh, April uh, 2015. I call Paul Bradley for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer. Can I uh, also ask the Minister whether he indicate uh, whether there will be a requirement for uniformity um, on policies and, and procedures uh, for all councils? Well, we uh, can I thank the member again. We, we are seeking to uh, provide as much uh, uniformity um, uh, as possible. Obviously, uh, we're, we're dealing with the, with the 11 new councils. Uh, but one would hope that a, a consistent approach would be um, uh, certainly um, a desirable outcome uh, to all of these discussions, and that's, that's what we'll hope to do. I call Paul Gervin. Thank you. Uh, Minister, in relation to the A8, is it possible to have an update in relation to uh, the progress and uh, the pros prospect of uh, the timing for the opening of that? Well, I'm grateful to the member for his uh, question, and indeed, um, I, I'm happy to say that uh, significant progress is being made on, on that scheme. We don't yet have uh, a, a definitive time scale uh, for the opening, um, but we, we, we're very hopeful that we can um, meet um, uh, in advance the, uh, the target that we had set ourselves. I think it will be of huge benefit uh, to, to that area. Uh, and not least uh, the Port of Lorne as well. Uh, and, uh, and I'm very um, grateful uh, that uh, all of the work of, of, of my department and my staff, and indeed the contractor uh, and uh, their staff, um, have uh, been working steadily uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the benefit of everyone. Uh, and I hope very much that uh, we're in a position to cut the tape um, at the earliest possible point. I call Paul Gervin. Thank you very much. Uh, just to uh, thank the Minister for his answer, but in light of the response, uh, I don't know whether the Minister has been made totally aware. We are aware that a large area of this road, which had been uh, surfaced, is now being lifted at additional costs, and we're hearing a figure of a million pounds because this, the, the uh, compound or the, the surface was not of the right standard. Who set the standard? And will the department be made to foot that bill, or will the contractor? And I thank the, uh, the member for his uh, supplementary question, and, and obviously um, it, it is a, a more detailed question that, w that deserves a fuller answer, and I will undertake to, to write to him on that issue. I call Megan Fearon. Your Megan, last can Corla, um, can I ask the minister if he is aware of um, concerns in relation to fish? Po fish? Poaching at Tigahan Dam Armagh, and if he has any plans to try and tackle the issue. Uh, grateful to the member for um, the, uh, the, the, the question, and indeed I, I am aware of uh, issues uh, surrounding Tigahan uh, Dam and the, the contention that there's been over the rights for those who, who want to um, uh, um, who want to use it as a, a as a, a major leisure facility for angling. Um, so, uh, I, I am also cautious in terms of my approach uh, to this issue, um, mindful that uh, uh, there has been uh, letters of a legal nature um, floating about, um, not in Tigahan Dam, but in, into my office. Uh, and so, um, I want to be cautious in any response and, and, and would hope that agreement can be found by all um, appropriate and valid users uh, that they can get some um, that they can set aside uh, some of the issues that, uh, that that are there today uh, or at this point unresolved uh, i hope we can resolve those and we can move forward into calmer waters 
I call Megan Fearn for supplementary. I thank the Minister for his answer. Um, and keeping in mind the legal issues, can the Minister at least concede that such poaching could lead to long term damage in the fishing reserves in the dam? Oh, I'm not in favour of poaching. Absolutely not. I mean, let me be absolutely clear about that. Uh, I'm not uh, uh, giving anybody the green light to say uh, it's, it, it's, right, it, it's right to poach or anything like that. And where uh, individuals have evidence or information, then they should bring that, uh, those allegations for full investigation to the proper authorities. And I hope um, if the members in receipt of that, she'll do likewise. Jonathan Craig is not in his place. I call Mickey Brady. Gordon, I got the uh, last concordia. Thank the Minister for his answer so far. Can I ask the Minister, has he looked at the obvious and evident tourist potential of the McGilligan Greencastle Ferry, the funding that is required for that, and also the obvious tourist potential that it has? Uh, grateful today to, to the member for his uh, supplementary or for his uh, for his question, and uh, I, I take it he means the Greencastle ferry in County Down. Yeah, because there's a couple of McGilligans and there's at least well, there's at least two Greencastles and there's uh, at least one McGilligan. If it's McGilligan, it, it's the project that in the past Limavady Council have been associated with. Now my department has no direct role in that. Um, if it's the County Down one, that's been, uh, that project is being managed by a, a private operator. Uh, and, and again, uh, we have no direct link into that except through uh, as a consultee in the planning processes. So if the member wanted to clarify that, uh, uh, I would be happy to, uh, to, to consider. And I call Mickey to clarify in his supplementary. I thank the Minister for his answer. And uh, obviously, maybe the question was about your possible input into that uh, particular uh, McGilligan Greencastle ferry. But obviously, I'll clarify that for the Minister uh, in writing. Um, supplementary question this is the supplementary question. Has the Minister had any input in the idea of an extension of the Wild Atlantic Way uh, trail to the north coast and the tourist potential that that has? That may be another minister's responsibility, but allow the minister to respond if he wishes. That sounds rather like the deputy minister's responsibility. Um, I, I'm not aware. It, it may well be again that the road service uh, may have been asked for an opinion through through various uh, consultations. Uh, again, I'm, I'm happy to check that and, and, and confirm um, if there's been any put, uh, input from my department uh, in writing to the to the member. I call Michelle McElveen. Mr. Deputy Speaker, following on from the question posed by my colleague, um, Mrs. Bradley, can I ask the Minister what assessment has been made regarding the condition of off-street car parks, which are to be transferred to new councils in April 2015? Can I thank the member for her uh, question? Uh, and indeed, uh, generally, uh, of course, the member will know that that uh, road service uh, and now Transport NI uh, have. Uh, regularly maintained uh, all of those uh, um, facilities over the years. Uh, uh, my uh, knowledge of them would suggest that, that most are in, in, in reasonably good condition and uh, would be uh, still considered an asset um, in, in their transfer. Uh, if she's aware of particular uh, cases, um, perhaps uh, she would write to me on them. I call Michelle McElveen. Okay, I'll thank the, the Minister for his question and obviously the supplementary might contradict what um, he's actually said that um, there are a number in my own constituency which are in extremely poor condition and do require significant investment and so I would like to ask the Minister does he intend to invest in those prior to the transfer or leave it then to the local ratepayers to foot the bill? I'm grateful uh, to uh, the, the member for her supplementary and uh, would ask her to, to provide me with uh, a list of those that, that, that she considers to be uh, defective. We may not agree uh, on that assessment. Um, we'll have to leave that to professional judgment, uh, but uh, we, can, uh, we can have a look um, at your list and see where we go from there. Members, uh, that is the end of question time. Our time is up.